Railroad flat cars are a convenient option to replace existing deteriorating bridge structures on low volume roads. Two or more flat cars are typically placed side by side to achieve the desired bridge width. Utilizing railroad flat cars as a bridge allows for rapid construction and greater cost savings compared to traditional practice. These benefits make them an attractive solution for rural communities in Indiana, as well as other states. Railroad flat cars have specific structural features that make them great candidates in bridge construction. They are typically constructed with one main girder running longitudinally down the middle of the car and two exterior girders on either side of the main girder. The longitudinal load carrying elements of a typical railroad flat car are the main girder, exterior girders, and stringers. When utilized as a bridge, the main box girder carries the majority of the traffic load. Railroad flat cars are designed to be supported at the locations where the wheels are connected to the flat car. They perform better as bridges if they are supported at the wheel trucks. The wheel trucks are located a few feet from either end of the flat car. When acquiring railroad flat cars, the geometry needs to be considered regarding whether or not a given car is suitable to be used as a low volume road bridge. The span length of the proposed bridge should be equal to or shorter than the distance between the center line of the wheel truck supports. Railroad flat cars are designed to be supported at these locations, therefore they perform better as bridges if they are supported at the wheel trucks. If the proposed span length is greater than the distance between the wheel trucks, intermediate support such as piers, and additional railroad flat car spans or alternative systems should be considered. The main box girder of a railroad flat car should be large enough to support all traffic loads expected to use the proposed bridge. Since the main girder carries the majority of the load on the flat car, its size has a great influence on how much load the bridge can carry and or if the bridge will need to be load posted. The strength of the main girder can be estimated through a basic engineering strength calculation. Load rating guidelines are also available through Indiana LTAP. Since many railroad flat car bridges consist of two or more flat cars placed side by side, the exterior girders of a railroad flat car should be suitable for constructing the required longitudinal connection between the two cars. Depending on the type of longitudinal connection which will be used, considerations should be made for the size of the exterior girder and how easy it will be to design and detail a connection between flat cars. The width of an individual railroad flat car should be considered in order to provide an adequate driving width. Typically, the width of an individual flat car is between 8 and 10 feet. Railroad flat cars, which are narrow, will require a wider longitudinal connection, which can be more problematic than narrower longitudinal connections. If two or more railroad flat cars are to be used side by side, they should have similar vertical cambers or longitudinal profiles. This will make constructing the longitudinal connection between the two cars easier and will make for a smoother driving surface. In addition, the cross section of each car should be the same to ensure compatible deflections when subjected to truck loading. Box cars and car haulers are not recommended to be used as highway bridges. The underside of a typical boxcar is shown, and note the shallow longitudinal load carrying elements. The sides and top portion of the boxcars and car haulers, which must be removed for highway bridge application, are integral to the structural integrity of the car. Therefore, when removed, the capacity of the altered car is much less than that of a traditional flat car. These 
guidelines regarding the physical condition of a flat car are intended to provide personnel with guidance to assist them in making an informed decision regarding whether or not a given railroad flat car is suitable to be used as a low volume road bridge. Although the entire railroad flat car should be visually inspected for damage, it is particularly important that the primary load carrying members are free from damage. Damage typically includes bent, cracked, corroded, or missing members. Railroad flat cars with a significant amount of damage, for example when involved in a derailment, should not be used. Typically when some members are found to be damaged, others are damaged as well. The flat car should be compatible with the anticipated bridge deck system. Typical systems include steel plate with asphalt, timber, or concrete. If the as-built deck is going to remain, it should be inspected to determine whether or not it is suitable to be used as a bridge deck. The paint or coating condition should be assessed to determine if a new coat of paint should be applied before placing the railroad flat car as a bridge. A satisfactory coat of paint can play an important role in protecting the railroad flat car from corrosion damage in the future life of the bridge. It is noted that the original paint of older flat cars may contain lead. Other considerations include how the railroad flat car will be transported to the bridge site, how the railroad flat car will be picked, the type of longitudinal connection which will be used, and the type of guardrail and attachment method to be utilized.